Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back. We are in fact back at Blood Watch today. I have decided to come back here and just focus on finishing up everything that we have to do here on Blood Mist. This is the content that I'm interested in seeing. I think that we're going to do the rest of this zone on the mage, and that's really going to be the goal of this playthrough going forward is just to finish off Blood Mist and see everything there is to see here. The Legion's in. And so let's take uh, the next quest from Vindicator Boros here. I shoot magic into the darkness. Velen states that if the Blood Elves have been opening rifts between this island and the Outland, there will be residue or anomalies left in the areas where the portals have been opened. You must search the island for locations that exhibit or display these anomalies. Alright, we can definitely do that. Let's plot out a little course of action here. Uh, hopefully we'll do that by taking on the lowest level stuff first. And it looks like the lowest level stuff is going to be the stuff all the way to the north up here. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to the north. That's going to be our plan. We'll start up here. Uh, we will come down this way and work our way through all of that and see how that goes. It's good because this playthrough has taught me that I am really not a fan of the mage. So, going forward, I won't have to wonder anymore. I won't have to think to myself, Robert, maybe you just didn't like the undead mage because it was classic, because of any other reason. Even in TBC, I still really don't enjoy the mage class nearly as much as I do some other classes in the game, so... It's really weird because, like I said, I, I've said before that I really like the idea of a mage a lot. I like the, the lore and the fantasy of a mage. But I really don't like how it plays out in the game. And a lot of it has to do with the amounts of downtime that you need to be drinking and eating as a mage to kind of sustain yourself. And it's one of those things that, like, maybe if I wasn't creating content, and if there wasn't anything else at stake, I could just deal with it. And I wouldn't mind eating and drinking for 30% of my time in-game, but... I just kind of become acutely aware of how tedious that gets, and it makes it... It's already tedious for me, but it makes it even more tedious uh, to know that... You know, it's not the most exciting thing to watch when we have to drink after every pull. And trust me, I, I know that excitement is not why you guys watch. Uh, but if it bothers me every time I have to do it, <laughs> it's not really sustainable. So we're fighting these guys and we need to make our way to the scouting point, which if we just keep walking forward, there we go. Got it. Now to take out the remaining void anomalies. We're going to drink some melon juice here and get ourselves back up to full mana. I will then make some mage food and some mage water.
It could also be that I'm learning that I really don't care for the Draenei as a race. I, I've never really played a Draenei very much before or for any length of time. This might be the longest time that I've leveled on a Draenei. And yeah, I, I don't really know what it is. I, I don't really care for them. It's almost like they don't fit. It's weird. It's like when I'm looking at myself playing a Draenei, I almost don't really feel like I'm playing a World of Warcraft, even though that's kind of weird because Draenei have a, kind of always been a part of the lore. Albeit the Draenei have taken different forms over the years. They've always been a part of the lore. Uh, well, if I'm paying attention, we're actually done here. So let's head over to the west to Clopper Whizbang. <laughs> what a name. Clopper Whizbang. All right, Blizzard. Perfect. Uh, what's going on here? Be very quiet. I'm observing murlocs. Living in an oversized turtle shell is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for science. After all, if the murlocs see me here, they'll react to my presence and contaminate my data. They'll probably kill you too, or eat you alive or something. So there's that. Explorers League. Okay, yeah, this is the follow-up. Alright. Pilfered equipment. Bring Clopper's equipment back. And what else do you have? Artifacts of the Black Silt. My observations and writings about the Black Silt Murlocs are quite illuminating. But they are just the beginning. I plan to return to Ironforge with items produ produced by the Black Silt's rudimentary crafting skills. The problem is that the Black Silt carry these items with them at all times. And I can't have their blood on my conscience. If you're willing to help me... He, he literally says, like, I don't want to kill these guys for their tools... Because I don't want their blood on my conscience. But you look like you're an unconscionable gal. You go ahead and do it. You'll murder anybody for experience and loot, won't you? To which we say, I accept. Be seeing you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, did one just spawn right where we just fought? Or was that some kind of weirdness that happened that I just didn't see? Pretty sure one spawned right where we just killed the other one. That's unsettling.
It also seems like this one is going to have a very, very bad drop rate, which is kind of a theme that we've been running into with the Draenei quest, is that a lot of them have drop rates that are pretty, pretty awful, actually. Pretty awful drop rates. Let's grab the equipment while this area is cleared out. But yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Something about the Drain, I, like, I just don't really feel any affinity for the race. Um, it, it kind of, it's kind of a sticking point for my immersion for some reason. It's just really weird. They don't, they don't seem to, I kind of felt it a lot when we went over to Darkshore. And we were interacting with all the Night Elves there. And then I just kind of realize like how sorely the Draenei kind of stick out both from the other races and from the world around them. Which makes sense because, you know, they're supposed to be hooved space aliens. And I guess if that's really like the, the immersion that you want to go for or like the aesthetic that you want to go for and that's what you can get immersed in is it's kind of that racial story of being like crash landed from another planet and not fitting in at all but it just kind of like it was weird it kind of it took me out of the immersion a little bit and then i kind of realized yeah i don't really care for the draenei very much which is a weird realization to have after you know playing the game for 15 years or so and the draenei being in the game for most of that and i, I never really played one uh for any length of time i guess to realize that about myself is that i don't care for them that much And when it comes down to it, I haven't really ever given much thought to, like, races in the game that I prefer more than others. Hey. Then. Let's get that one turned in while we're standing right here. Can't hurt. Didn't chain into anything else. Maybe it's like the combination of the race and the class. Maybe if I'd have played like a, a big, broad-shouldered Draenei Paladin. Like a male Paladin. Maybe that would have like resonated a little more, I guess. I, I don't know. It could be just some combination of the race and class. And just that just kind of doesn't really go together for me and keeps kind of pulling my brain out of things. Let's go ahead and drink. And yeah, it's kind of really a shame that only the Draenei can be Shaman on the Horde side. I'd love to roll up like a Dwarf Shaman in Classic. That would be something cool to see if they would like, in the, in the Classic servers, and I'm not talking about Season of Mastery stuff, but just like base Classic servers. 
at some point kind of open up the race class restrictions a little bit. I know that's kind of hard to do with the way that racials are used in the game. And a part of me really hates that there are racial abilities at all because of that. Because it stops them from opening up the classes to everybody. But yeah, I'd love to play a Dwarf Shaman on the Alliance side. I just don't think I will ever play a Draenei Shaman. I'll probably never play a Draenei again. If I had to guess. Don't really know what would make me want to come back. I like their little story and I feel like it works well in isolation, but like I said, as soon as I was in Darkshore, I kind of felt like a dissonance between the race and, and the rest of Azeroth. I, and I felt like that was something that I was going to keep confronting in every zone that we went into. They'd probably fit in really well once you got into Outland. Once you got out on the Hellfire Peninsula and started going through Outland, they probably fit in really well. But questing to get to that point would probably be really strange. It was like when the one when the one night elf guy knew that we were Draenei or something, I, I kind of thought to myself, like, wow, like news travels fast. I don't really know why you're so familiar with us. Kind of a jarring moment. Yeah, well, uh, that's one way to die. Let's see where we're at. Oh, we are quite a distance away. Yeah, that was just my fault. I saw him walking behind me. I thought we were going to have time to finish that guy, Frost Nova, and run like hell. Maybe hit a potion, but uh, he hit us once. He, like, he basically looked at us, and we died. So, didn't really have any time to react there. And yeah, just to be clear, guys, I'm not just trying to complain about the Draenei or about the Mage class, but what I found is, like, in the past, I, I've reached points in playthroughs that I've not been having fun, and I've just kind of stopped playing them. And I've never said anything about it or anything like that, and I feel like it's probably better if I actually express some of the things that I feel and think about a class or about a race or about a playthrough before I decide to just never return to it. So that is what I'm trying to do here with this. That's why I'm talking so much about how I feel about the class and about the Draenei. Uh, because it's all stuff that factors in to determining whether or not I continue with the playthrough. And so if I don't, or when I don't, then, you know, you guys will understand where I'm coming from a little bit. And I feel like that transparency is probably better than me just deciding on my own, hey, I'm not enjoying this, and then just going off and doing something else. And then everybody's kind of wondering, hey, what's going on? I, I, you seem to be having fun on that. It's like, I can seem to be having fun a lot if I just don't talk very much. <laughs> uh, but sometimes that, that's not reflective of reality. Oh, here we go. This is going to be fun. Let's freeze you in place. We need to deal with this guy because we are taking lots of damage because I don't have Dampen Magic up. That would have helped immensely. Uh, you... I don't really have a good solve for at the moment. Uh, let's pop a potion. We're just getting crushed by his attacks. It is not good. Level 15 to our level 17 and he's dealing a lot of damage to us. Let's back off a little bit. And there we go.
I'm strongly considering a Night Elf Druid uh, for our next run on the Alliance side in TBC. And then I think you can expect the return of the Rogue soon for the Horde side of things. It's either between, at this point for me, it's between a Night Elf Druid and a Dwarf Warrior for Alliance side. The warrior is my favorite class, but I do try to keep in my mind that I did just level a warrior in the Season of Mastery, and even though the Season of Mastery is, you know, slightly different, it's really different as far as leveling speed. But a lot of the zones, I think, especially in the mid to late game, are going to be the same zones. So I, I don't know if I want to take another warrior through that same content. Um, yeah... Not sure. Not sure if I want to do that. I, I think for my own sanity, the next time I level a warrior, it will probably be on Horde side, because I haven't leveled a Horde warrior at all. In Classic, in TBC, in SOM, I, I've never touched a Horde warrior. So that'll probably be the next time I do that, um, sometime in the far future, hopefully. But yeah, I was, I was strongly considering a Druid, uh, a Night Elf Druid. But doing a little bit of reading about it, you know, thinking we're going to be going feral, obviously, and uh, sticking in cat form for questing because we'll be able to go pull the pull, the, similarly to how we are able to do on the rogue. But then having the ability to level up in dungeons and actually tank uh, would be good. And I think what I read was that the, the druid gets swipe at like level 16. So just immediately getting an ability as a tank that can hit three targets uh, around you is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing uh, for Classic. Pretty sure at level 16 on the Warrior tanking I would be doing a lot of tab targeting. Uh, because Cleave only hits the main target and one other target. When you do a Cleave as a Warrior it, it doesn't hit three targets, it hits two. And you don't get, if there's four enemies around you, you're not exactly getting a lot of choice <laughs> as to like who the secondary target is. I've always kind of not understood how it chooses that. So yeah, and, and cleave cost a lot of rage. Uh, and I'm hoping swipe will be a, a better option for a tank. So that's kind of my thoughts um, as far as like an alliance side playthrough after the mage. It's really hard for me not to play a tank uh, in Classic because I do know most of the dungeons. And I can tank and I'm pretty okay at it. And every time I look at the Looking for Group channel, groups are looking for tanks more than they're looking for anything else. I think that there's a pretty big tank shortage in TBC, at least on the servers that I play on, being Mancrick for Horde and Pagel for Alliance. Uh, both early game and late game, I always see people trying to find tanks, and I, I don't know. I don't know how I could how I could not play a tank at this point. Part of me feels like I, I owe it, I owe it to the servers uh, to do it. I really enjoy tanking too. Uh, I really do. Like anything else, it has its frustrations sometimes, but. Easy to get groups. Yeah, these guys are just not giving up the last few items we need, are they?
And I just noticed that we are out of mana. I'm going to preemptively give to the Naru us here. He froze me in place before I could do the same to him. That was really smart of him. Having our buffs up would be a swell idea. It's funny, I did remember to put, uh, you know, Dampen Magic up at one point, and then throughout all that forgot to put our other buffs up. I'm sure someone has been yelling at their screen for a while now. Something along the lines of he complains about not having any mana, but then he won't cast Intellect on himself. Something like that, and you're not wrong. Uh, I'm, well, I was gonna say I'm gonna run away from this. Um, yeah, then we got frozen in place. Let's try to run away and live. I do have to also say, this is one of the most tedious quests that I've done in a while. It's like, on par for the, like the quest that made me leave Darkshore, or decide to leave Darkshore, was the one where we were trying to fight the little crabs and they weren't dropping their meat. And that was kind of one of the things that made me decide to leave that zone. Uh, and then we come back here and I'm having a similar issue with this quest. Hey, at least we hit level 18, that's cool, right? Sure. Sure it is. Yeah, this guy wasn't wrong, man. When he said he didn't want their blood on his conscience, he would have had to murder scores and scores of them to get the knives he needed. That's why he wanted us to do it. We have had to kill so many of them just to get a handful of their knives. I don't know if that's worth it. I think I just got a whisper about somebody asking me to join a guild, which I historically don't do. I, I'm pretty particular about the kinds of people that I would guild with and, you know, communicate with daily. I don't even know if it's that I'm particular, I, I just don't have a lot of time and effort for a guild, I guess. I feel like when you get into a guild, like, if you're going to be in a guild, you have to actually commit to being a part of the guild and showing up for guild stuff and, and getting on board with the raiding schedule. And I don't think I'm in for all that r right now. In Wrath of the Lich King, I, I would very much like to raid, and I guess I'll think about guilds more uh, when we know when Wrath is coming out.
Don't want to pull the seer. Oh, well. <laughs> These guys in their nets, man. These guys in their nets are literally at times killing us. It's pretty crazy how, how intelligently they seem to use them. It's probably just coincidence with it when it happens, but... It always makes it seem like intelligent design. Whew. Okay, there we go. There are all the crude knives that we need. Let's go turn this in and, and hope that he doesn't have a follow-up. And that if he does, it does not involve fighting more murlocs. I am about murlocked out. Uh, he's gonna give us a treasure map that's gonna begin a quest. You have a great day now. That's quite a reward. The crudely drawn map reveals nothing of its maker, but it appears to have been drawn with an unsteady hand. Wavering lines and symbols depict a small pavilion with broken columns located to the west of a partially submerged tower. If the map is to be believed, this cluster of ruins appears to be located on the eastern coast of the island. Okay, uh, that's something we could do. Level 16 stuff. Level 18 stuff down here, but I kind of feel like maybe we try to tackle this. And then we come over here. Maybe we give this another shot. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of, I've been really, oh, shoot. Let's, let's go back to Bloodwatch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, level 18... What I've learned on the mage is that we get our butts kicked by basically anything and everything. Uh, anything that's at level with us is probably going to be a hard time. Anything that's above level is going to be incredibly difficult to deal with, especially if we end up pulling more than one enemy. Uh, sheep helps at times, but when you sheep something and then you burn through all of your mana fighting the other thing, you don't have a lot you can do when the sheep breaks. Kronakai Christo. Well, let's take our cloth boots here. Oh yeah, one of you guys was mentioning that there is a rep vendor here. There's a rep vendor similar to how there's one in the Blood Elf area. I probably need to find the rep vendor at this point. May your days be uh, let's see. Who is the rep vendor? None of you guys. Usually they're called like a provisioner. Provisioner something or another. Ambassador of the Still Pine. Hand of Argus. Huh. Herbalism trainer. Yeah, I don't know where this guy is. Bowyer. Tradesman. All prices it's really easy to find in the Blood Elf area. Never had a problem finding the guy. But of course, here now, it's going to be a problem. Uh, I don't think there's any way I can track it, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't see any way that we would actually track it. And yeah, I have no idea where he's at, so good times. I think I've like clicked on every every NPC here. Maybe they're down here by the general goods. Stable master. Character screen up is probably driving some of you guys mad. Yeah, we have general goods. Herbalism trainers. Stable master. Hand of Argus. I'm literally going to go through every NPC to like do my due diligence and then you guys can tell me how blind or stupid I am to have not seen the guy. You wish to buy. And, and you won't be wrong. Good fortune. I am basically blind and mostly stupid. Because yeah, I don't, I don't see the guy. You have another quest. I'm not excited about that as I should be. Vindicator Kuros at Bloodwatch wants you to recover 12 boxes of medical supplies. Okay. Sure. You are the flight master. 
You are a dwarf with the Explorers League who can teach us something. Uh, you guys are guards. And yeah, so... Huh. Yeah, for sure somewhere here there's a there's a vendor and we could probably buy some pretty okay stuff from them. Uh, obviously we're not going to be doing that since we are too stupid to find them. I could Google it. Uh, I'm not going to. Instead, what I'm going to do is head back out and continue playing the game. Uh, we're going to go over here. Perhaps this old journal is what the map is referring. Examining the book carefully, you conclude that it must be a journal. Its pages are filled with an elegant script differing from that of the map. The text of many of the pages is obscured by drawings and writings in the map maker's hand. It's nearly impossible to make out the text beneath the map ma maker's tales of drunken carousing during shore leave. Uh, okay. Lacking the means to read the book's contents, you think about who might be able to help you separate the author's words from the mapmaker's scrawl. Remembering the Acherite Pathias' collection of artifacts from countless cultures, you wonder if his experienced eye might be able to help decipher the book's contents. Okay then, so you're telling me I ran out here just to run back? Not a big surprise. And yeah, that does seem to be the case. Let's go ahead and we will spend our talent point. May the light embrace you. Hmm, this is most intriguing. Yes, I should be able to make out the what the original author wrote in the pages of this book. I should have everything I need for the process. This should only take a moment. Wow. You have everything you need standing out here in a field by a little tent? Pretty damn impressive. Remember the lessons of the past. Now let's see. In the process of translating this, I believe I've learned more about the drunken exploits of a certain Andrew Clementine. Uh, but no matter, Mr. Clementine's contribution notwithstanding, this seems to be the journal of a man named... Oh, we're getting too much scroll. Noel Kai. The entries toward the end describe a brutal battle. Take a look at this passage. Okay. Each day is a blessing. The translation is ready now. Archerite Pathius points out a block of text at the end of his translation. The enemy is nearly upon us. We've gathered up all the survivors and retreated to the temple to the east. It's the last ground we truly hold on the island. And there is a sense among the survivors that we will make our last stand here. I've taken care of to bury my last few possessions on the grounds of the temple with the hope that someone will find them and know what happened here. Be kind to those less fortunate. Are we going back to that temple? Uh, we're going back to a temple nearby. Alright.
Grasses and shrubs cover an unnatural bulge in the earth. A few minutes spent digging reveals an old box, almost certainly the one mentioned in Nalkai's journal. If this is locked... Oh, nice! An 8-slot bag? That's actually really good. That's exciting. There we go. Now we're optimized with the bags. Okay, and that was it. This and an offhand lantern, which we are probably not going to use because all we can equip currently are staves. And yeah, okay. I mean, we have a lot we could do here. If I'm being totally honest, and you guys can probably tell this by now, is like, I'm not having a great time here. <laughs> I'm not having a lot of fun here in, in Blood Mist, just like I really wasn't having a lot of fun on the class in Darkshore. And I don't know if it's the class, if it's the Draenei, or if it's the zone. But I'm starting to get a feeling that it's a little bit of all three of those columns. And that's a lot of kind of dislike and not fun times kind of all adding together. And yeah, I don't really have a lot of ambition right now to seek out any of this other stuff. So that is the Lord's honest truth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of a break here. It's obviously going to be a really short episode. I do apologize for that. I hope you guys understand. Uh, I have tried to express some of what I feel about the playthrough is this is just one of those times when like back in the day I would probably have just finished up the episode not said a lot and then never returned to it and that would leave a lot of people wondering hey what the hell uh, but I, I've tried to talk a little bit about uh, how I feel I think talking anymore would just be self-indulgent and yeah I, I'm gonna leave things here that being said I'd love to hear from you guys I am thinking about a Night Elf Druid for the next Alliance run we do in TBC. And we should be seeing the Blood Elf Rogue pop, pop back up on the channel pretty soon here as well. Thank you guys for being here. I, I really do appreciate it and I appreciate you listening to all of my complaining. If you have made it to this point of the video, thank you so much. It really does mean the world to me, your support. Take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back somewhere in Azeroth really soon. Bye now.